Traders, I'm done trading for the day and as you can see here, I'm up $1,400 and there is a lesson, there is something I want to talk about and as you can guess, we talked about it earlier, it's closing gaps. So let's discuss closing gaps a little bit because you know, a lot of traders are uh, trading gaps, not just gap and goes like you see me do a lot, but also the fact that gaps are getting closed and they are getting closed quite often. In fact, approximately 80% of the gaps are getting closed. So now, just to start with, let's go quickly through some of my trades and then we'll talk about closing gaps. Gaps, as you can see here, I've got two winners, two losers, actually two trades in mRNA for the long side and uh, the rest just uh, normal winners or losers or whatever. And I'm still riding uh, BA, so I'm a little bit better than that, but uh, not much, another $300 or so. Anyway, I'm, I'm having a small green day. Uh, quick look, MRCY, I was looking for a gap and go. It did not work out, as you can see here. It uh, kind of bounced around at one point and moved out. That was a losing trade. ATVI almost reached my target. It was a gap and go long, and it did well. I was looking for more than 80 cents. It came up 77 cents, very close to my target, and then came down, and then I had a loser. So just, I mean, a combination of bad luck and, uh, of course, the wrong pick, and, of course, the fact the market just kept coming down. And uh, nice short in BA. BA, I really liked uh, the daily. If you take a look at the daily of BA, you can see why I liked it. But if you look at the intraday consolidation here, you can see that once it broke under this consolidation, that was a nice technical formation for a short. That's where I took BA short. And then since I kind of liked it, I added. That's why BA is a better winner than the other. So BA just kept going and I'm still riding right now over three points and uh, doing well. I did have two nice longs in mRNA. mRNA initial trade was a gap and go again. That one failed, but enough, unlike ATVI, enough to uh, provide me with a nice uh, partial right here at the top, and then it came down. And then another trade here over 177 because I expected it to uh, come up again. Just a quick reminder, you need to take a look at the daily of mRNA to understand why I'm so interested in this stock. Look at the daily here. That's a beautiful breakout formation and it's likely to happen in the next few days. So, nothing special really, but uh, the most important thing is gaps. Why do they get closed and what can we do about it? So, let's take a look at Tesla. A quick, uh, a quick uh, you know, just... Take a quick look at Tesla and see what happened. Tesla started today with a gap up. Look at what happened. Tesla came down and closed the gap very, very quickly. Now, that's something you see in a lot of stocks. Lots of the stocks that you're going to tra trade, it's going to look quite the same. The stock really wants to move up. Then it came down, okay? But the first move down or up, depending on the direction of the gap, like if Tesla started, would have started with the gap down, it probably would have moved up, but it started with the gap up. A lot of pressure, downside pressure, in order to close the gap. And then, only then, at the point where it closed the gap, it spiked up. As I mentioned earlier, the point where the gap is closed is likely to become a reversal point. So if you take a look at Tesla and you see Tesla coming down so strong and you think like, oh my God, this, this is like, there's lots of sellers here. It's very likely to continue. No, think again. That would be the point, I mean, many times, it would be the point of reversal. Just don't trust the trend at the point where the stock is coming down and closing the gap. Now, I'm going to give you a very quick um a very quick uh, lesson or a very quick uh, uh, explanation about why do gaps close, but that's something I do in the Star Trader course and, course and I do it, um, it, it's like an hour lesson or so. So just a quick answer, why does that happen? Just imagine the following, 80% of the volume in the stocks that we're trading, like Tesla, comes from institutional traders. Institutional traders are not intraday traders. They may be buying, they may be holding, they may be selling uh, Tesla, and they're doing it normally, not for their account, for their customer's account. So if an institutional trader is supposed to be selling 1 million shares of Tesla, for example, they don't do it in one day, they would probably do it in several days. But the fact is, if they sell the stock, and I'm not getting into the in-depth explanations here, but just realize the following. If they're selling the stock that is gapping up over yesterday's close, 
they're making extra commission from their customer. So for an institutional, institutional trader who is 80% of the volume in Tesla, you need to remember that. We are only trading stocks which are over $10. I'm only trading stocks which are over $10 and has 80% of the volume coming from institutional traders. These are the stocks which has more than 1 million shares volume a day. That's why I don't trade penny stock and stuff like that because they do not come with a set of rules. So Tesla is being controlled by institutional traders, 80% of the volume. The rest, 20% is more like long-term investors, retail customers like us, but we are traders. We are a very small part in the 20%. So these institutional traders are getting extra commission when the stock starts with a gap up and then they start selling that would be an extra commission, extra commission, extra commission, less commission, less commission, less commission, no commission. You see the point where Tesla closed the gap, no extra commission for institutional traders. They made extra commission by selling at the point where the stock was over the gap closed, uh, well, over the gap of yesterday's, is yesterday's, uh, sorry, uh, closing price. So that would be yesterday's closing price here in Tesla. That would be extra commission. That would be no commission. At the point of no commission, some buyers could kick in, uh, some other sellers, whatever, but it's likely to reverse. That's why if you're watching the S&P 500, which is not one stock like Tesla, but many stocks like Tesla, because it's 500 big companies, including Tesla, that's why it behaves the same way. Because look, it started with a gap up, it came down, it closed the gap. At the area of closing the gap, it reversed and moved higher. You heard me several times today mentioning the fact that it's likely to just close the gap and then change direction. Don't trust this downtrend. I mentioned that several times, but then it spiked down under the lows. That's another lesson, which we already discussed uh, several times before, but uh, just a reminder, when you see the market moving to a new low, not just the market, the stocks, stocks as well, nice technical formation for a breakdown and then breaking down, nice bear flag and then failing to move lower. And then I said, wait for the next green candle. You see, that's the next green candle. Once the next green candle came in and moved over the top of the red candle, that means a reversal and that's likely now to continue. What do I mean by likely? I said earlier 60, 65%, there's still a 35% chance that it's gonna come down. But if you're looking for a long, that will be the point where it failed to move lower and moved higher for two reasons. One, it spiked down and failed, and then you got a green candle. Second, we closed the gap. Since we closed the gap, then it's likely for the market to move higher. So a quick lesson about why gaps are getting closed at 80% of the time. And uh, just think about uh, different uh, trading systems that you could have for closing the gap. So traders, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, the fact that you came in today. And if you're on YouTube, how about a thumb up? I think we earned it today. I think we had a good day and um, hopefully you've done well. And anyway, appreciate if you give us a thumb up. So thank you all and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye traders.